Hello everyone. This question was asked by one of my subscribers to make a video on the state and explain the Alembert's principle. Okay, first now let us understand few basic concepts. First is what are kinematic problems? The problems in which the cause of motion is not involved. Okay, the problems which do not involve the cause of motion are called as the kinematic problems. Then what are kinetic problems in which the consideration of force causing the motion okay, are needed? They are called as the kinetic problems. Okay, cause of motion is not involved. Here it is involved. So, kinetic problems and kinematic problems. Now, the dynamic problem can be converted. Dynamic means when a body is in motion. Okay, if it is if it is not moving, then it is called as static. So, dynamic problem can be converted into a static equilibrium problem by applying D. Alembert's principle. So, we are using D. Alembert's principle to convert a dynamic problem into a static one so that we can use the equations of equilibrium. Okay, so this is done by introducing an additional force. Okay, to convert it from dynamic to static, what we are doing? We are introducing an additional force and then the normal equations of static equilibrium. I think you all have been using the static equations of equilibrium to solve the problems, right? So, to convert it from dynamic to static, we are adding an additional force, then solving the problem using equations of static equilibrium. Then, the D. Alembert's principle, it is nothing but an application to the Newton's second law of motion to a moving body. But what we are doing, the same law, we are just seeing it from a different point of view or a different angle. Okay. Now, what is Newton's second law of motion? We all have studied this, right? This is very basic. So, according to Newton's second law, the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the impressed force and it takes place in the direction of force acting on it. What it means? Force is directly proportional to rate of change of momentum. But momentum is mass into velocity. As mass is constant, right? This term will be constant. So, force is directly proportional to mass into rate of change of velocity. Applying it to only here. Okay. Then what is rate of change of velocity? It is nothing but acceleration. So, force is directly proportional to mass into acceleration. F is directly proportional to M into A. So, force equal to mass into acceleration. What we are getting? F equal to MA. Right? We all have studied this from PUC. Okay? Now, if instead of a single force, here what we are saying? A single force, impressed force. Instead of a single force, a system of forces act on a particle in the above statement. Okay? Then, that statement reduces to, means... First, what we are doing? We are taking just a single force. Right? Now, instead of just a single force, what we are doing? We are applying a system of forces. Right? This is a system of force. Okay? Then, it, these system of force, it will have a resultant. Right? Combining all this, you will get a single resultant. Right? So, Resultant force is equal to product of mass and acceleration in the direction of resultant force. Mathematically, replacing a single force, this F by R. R is nothing but the resultant. Instead of one force, if there are many forces acting, then we are taking the resultant of that force. Then this equation becomes R equal to MA. Okay. Then, hence... Many times the Newton's second law, it can be stated as a particle acted upon by an unbalanced system of forces has an acceleration directly proportional and is in line with the resultant force. In line with the resultant force. We can state the Newton's second law in this way as well. Okay, instead of considering it only one force, if there are many forces, we will take the resultant of that and state it like this. Okay, now let us study what is D. Alembert's principle. 
This principle was coined by a French mathematician Jean Le Rond de Alembert. Okay, in the year 1943. Okay, and Newton's second law of motion. What he did is Newton's second law of motion is applicable not only to the motion of a particle. Till now, what we have read is applicable to a particle, but what he said was but also to the motion of a body he said that it can be applied to motion of a body and he looked at the same equation okay r equal to ma if there are system of forces okay from a different angle so now we can write r equal to ma just now we have written now taking ma on the other side of the equation so what we get r minus ma equal to 0 let it be equation 1 now this term minus ma it may be looked as a force of magnitude m into a we can take this as a force of magnitude m into a but applied in the opposite direction of motion means this is the body this is the resultant or you can take all the forces if you are taking then in the all these are acting like this then it is acting like this opposite okay then applied in the opposite direction of motion and is termed as the inertia force or the reverse effective force this is what the lumber did so he looks at the equation one as an equation of equilibrium and states that system of forces acting on a moving body is in a dynamic equilibrium with the inertia force on the body this is known as D. L. Lambert's principle. Okay, what he did? He applied a force in the opposite direction. Okay, of reverse in nature. So, and he said that it is in a dynamic equilibrium. This is known as D. L. Lambert's principle. You have to write this statement that system of forces acting on a moving body is in dynamic equilibrium with the inertia force of the body inertia force is of that body okay this is known as the d alembert's principle now let us see let us consider a body like this okay subjected to a system of forces causing the body to move what these forces what they are doing they are causing the body to move with an acceleration small a in the direction of the resultant okay then let us apply a force equal to ma show this only by a dotted line okay two dotted lines and this arrow that is in the opposite direction just now i explained like this okay if you are taking these are forces then this is in opposite direction show this by a solid line this by a dotted line okay then apply a force equal to ma in the reversed direction reverse direction of acceleration as shown now according to d alembert's principle the equations of equilibrium okay that is sigma fx equal to 0 and sigma fy equal to 0 may be used for the system of forces shown in the above figure d alembert said that now we can apply the equations of equilibrium because the body is in a dynamic equilibrium that is what he did he just looked at the same equation from a different point of view okay so the inertia force minus ma has a physical meaning minus ma means what it is we know we have studied the newton's first law of motion that a body continues to be in a state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compelled to change by an external force so that means everybody it has a tendency to continue in its state of rest or of uniform motion this tendency is called as the inertia we have studied this right hence inertia force is the resistance okay inertia force is nothing but the resistance offered by a body to the change in its state of rest or of uniform motion Okay, so usually the equations of equilibrium always we have been using, right? So usually the equations of equilibrium are applied to a system of forces acting on a body. Okay, inertia forces not acting on the moving body. 
what it is inertia force inertia force actually it's a force exerted by the body right by the body to resist the change in its state hence many scientists they criticize the d alembert they they criticize okay what he has done that has been criticized okay but many engineers prefer using this principle because just by applying a reverse effective force moving body it can be treated as a body in the equilibrium and we can solve that problem okay or analyze it using equations of the static equilibrium it becomes very simple and easy okay we can state the d'alembert principle in one more way that is it states that a system may be in dynamic equilibrium by adding to external force an imaginary force which is commonly known as the inertia force okay so if you write the statement of the d'alembert's principle and explain it okay taking a body like this and a system of forces and an inertia force adding an inertia force to it okay and with respect to the newton's first law and second law of motion if you explain it then that should be sufficient thank you thank you for asking the question please like share and subscribe to my channel